Welcome back to Deals and Track. In this episode, we save a prancing horse from the glue factory. Behold, one stripped down, ready to address timing belt on a 3BZ Toyota V6. So, what do we have to do next? Well, we've stripped all of the external cover gubbins off. Uh, we've also got the pulley off, which thankfully only needed a bit of a chap. Previously, I found these to need literally one in piece to get them off, but that wasn't too big a fight. I'm guessing because it's not long been off. I can back that up by saying the belt looks pretty fresh, so we're probably just investigating here rather than doing proper maintenance. But anyway, what we're gonna have to do next is get the belt off. We don't want to be going home about this. Timing, especially on a V6, is a pretty complicated thing. And we want to get it right. So what I'm gonna do first of all, is spin the engine around and get my timing marks locked up to where they should be. And you'll see here there's two indents. Mm, maybe you'll see, maybe you won't. There's two indents on the top of the back cover plate for the timing belt. These will line up with these wee indents here that we've got on the actual pulleys for the cams. That and that will need to be lined up, so we'll turn them all around. Once I've got that done, I'm also going to reinforce this with some white marker. Now, the reason I'm going to do this is because I'm going to use the belt as well as the timing marks to make sure this thing's definitely spot on when it goes back together. Like I say, belt and braces, if you've got two ways of checking timing, it's probably better than one. So, tip X, old belt marked up, get it all off, and we're good to go. Now, about getting it all off. You'll see here, there's a substantial spring assembly. That is the tensioner. What we need to do is back that off and get the tension off of it and then chuck a pin in here to lock it. That's maintenance mode. Once that's done, we can get the belt off and see what the story is with this water pump. That's our belt off. So now we're ready to hit the water pump. And I'm pleased to know it feels mint. I wouldn't say pleased actually, I was kind of hoping it would be seized or rattling or something, but nope, it seems in pretty good health. So, good news. That is definitely a match for that. So we've got the right pump to go back on. The bad news is, there's nothing wrong with that. The reasons for this not pumping coolant are becoming stranger by the day. However, I'm not getting too beat up about this. We've got no history of a belt and a pump being done in this. So if nothing else, this has added a bit of value to the car with a bit of servicing. So uh, I'm gonna scrape off the face, get the old pump back on, get the belt timed, and then we can look to put the engine back in. But before I do, I think the car's gonna go up and we're gonna get a look at a few other things because it may be a blockage. that now built back up so in the absence of anything else
So the engine is more or less put back in. I've got a couple of things to tighten up. I've exhaust very still to deal with. But what I've rigged up here is a garden hose plumbed into the feed line for the radiator and a bucket sitting under the return. So I'm just going to flush through and make sure we're getting a good flow in this. And if we don't, we're not finished. Yeah, by all accounts the tap's not on high, so we'll give it a bit of a bigger flush. Yeah, quite tricky to do that when the tap's at the other end of the workshop, but full flush means full flow. There are no blockies in this, so... Okay, so we've progressed a wee bit further now. I have had to take the thermostat housing back off because we've tried backfilling this now. Well, let me demonstrate. So what we've done is backfill up the uh, I don't know, coolant outline uh, and then the coolant return, I guess, is what it's going to flow out of. Now, first up, we had a wee coolant leak, but that's not the end of the world because it was a wee, this guy, that was missing, which is fair enough, it's just a wee bleed screw. Uh, so that's been resolved. Uh, then we filled it back up again and it was leaking out of the flange because there wasn't a gasket before and there wasn't a gasket with the kit. So I've put some silicon sealer on and by all accounts that's now resolved the issue it seems to be sealing. Um, what I've also done is then flowed it and nothing came out at all. Now you'd expect a dribble or a wee bit, nothing. So. There is something, somewhere, not right with this. Now, I'll be honest, this is a replacement. We've already put a stat in this, because I suspected the old stat might be sticking. This one's not great either, so what I'm going to do for the moment is just send this without a stat. Now, don't get all heated internet. I am doing this for testing purposes because I want to make sure I get a hot radiator. Now, we'll get a hot radiator without a stat if we set it on idle. I just need to check that everything here is flowing. I want a... a a complete coolant system that's doing what it should do and the only way to quickly and safely do that is to take the stat out and make sure it circulates coolant. So I've put this back on without the stat for the moment, we're going to assemble it all up, I'm going to get it uh, clutch line still get bled, I'm going to deal with all this, this is just a f***ing mess, uh, and then wheels back on, put it down, get the clutch bled, uh, exhaust on, and then I'm going to do the, the proper bleed system for it and see if we can get a coolant system that works. <laughs> Right, that was a monumental amount of work, but we have now got a running car again with a timing belt and the water pump changed. So now we'll at least know that that's not going to give us problems. However, I also want to make sure that it's doing the right thing temperature wise. So I've asked Janet to get another temperature gauge. Why do I say another? Well, as you probably noticed, this thing has been sitting here for some time. Now I've actually just rewired all of this and put a proper earth in place. But uh, that is a temperature sensor, which uh, Hopefully it will now work with the new gauge, because the last one absolutely did not. Now when you wire up gauges, much as any other kind of wiring, there's a right way and a wrong way to do it. Well, that's not true, there's only really a right way, which is basically what I said. Anyway, uh, what we're going to do here is just check the wiring I've put in. Now, this sensor needs to be earthed for it to correctly work. What happens is the gauge chucks about 5 volts down it, and measures the lack of resistance it gives as the car warms up. So in order for this to give resistance and complete the circuit, it needs to air onto the chassis. You'll notice here, there are two bits of rubber hose completely isolating this entire union away from everything. So I've run a little black air lead up to a chassis air post. And what we're just gonna do is make sure that that actually works. And we're gonna do that with a continuity test. Now all I'm gonna do is touch the actual sensor itself and we can hear that the sensor body will earth to the car. Now that's good. We can also check by putting the positive end on that and check for continuity there and I don't get any. That means that the sensor actually has to give some form of result and it's not shorting to earth. So that's good. Everything should work as designed. Next we need to go look at the dial. Now what I've done here, I've got the wee red wire that was running to the gauge and it does go into the car near the dashboard. I've got it pulled out the door and it's got sat here onto the loom for the sensor. And that loom looks a bit like this. It's all very fine cable, and that's a sensor here. There's two more wires I'm going to have to run to this, a positive and a negative. Now, the positive should really come on with the switched live from the ignition. Otherwise, the gauge is just going to sit and give you data when the car's off. 
an inevitable flat in your battery. That's not a good thing. But for the moment, I just want to make sure this works because I have doubts over the last gauge's wiring. And uh, well, we just want to check it before we go plumbing everything in. So I'm just going to run a positive and a negative straight to the battery in this instance. And that's just going to be we wee test flying leads, much like I've got here. That should hopefully give me a gauge that lights up and reads 10 degrees, I would like to think. Maybe 20, it's summer. Well, that's good. My little test circuit worked. I proved the gauge works. Now what we're going to do is leave it in the car and come back to it later. The reason being, I don't really go battering the door in the ramp. And I've got full of things that I might want to do here just before we pull it all off. Crazy. This is a nightmare to get on a ramp, so I'm trying to kind of coordinate my jobs so that I don't have to keep pulling it on and off because it's a horror story. So the next thing I want to look at is the fans on the radiator. That, is this like a convincing Ed China impersonation yet, no? Right, what we're fitting here is an override switch to activate the fans should they be needed. Now, I'm not going to get into why in a big internet flame war. This is Janny's car and this is what he wants, so that's what he can have. What I'm going to do here is add another live, activate the fan above and beyond what the normal fan really would do. So we're just going to kind of jump into the wiring it's already got rather than rip it all out and start again. I'm going to just check that this fan is actually going to work before we go any further. Because by all accounts, I've got no idea. And if I do all the work that I'm going to do to make it work and the fan doesn't spin, it'll be pretty tough. Now the fan itself has got two blade terminals in it and by luck I've actually got the right terminals to fit that. So what I'm going to do is using the same test leads I used to rig up the gauge, which uh, by all accounts is fantastically thick for a gauge but probably not thick enough for this. So we'll just trim them down, knock a couple of spades on, crimp it and then just fling them on the battery and see what happens. I'm kind of hoping I'll hear whooshy noises, but if I was being really professional about this, I'd have done one red and one black, but that's good. Well, what I can do is beef up this wire, run it to a relay, and run it to a switch within the car. Now, that means that granted this is disconnected from the loom and won't actually come on with the start, but there is actually another fan here that will, so it just gives a wee override. Should we get nervous in traffic? So. Like I say, what the customer wants, we can do. So I'm going to run this through, set up a wee relay, and then run a live into the car for a switch. And that'll probably come on with ignition as well. The reason being, if it forgets to turn it off, it turns the car off, it'll kill the fan. Plus the wire going to the relay doesn't actually need to be as thick as the wire's going to the fan. So, let's have that. Right, apologies if you can hear in the background some emo nonsense. There's another gig going in Hybrox, so not much you can do about it. Anyway, wired on a little relay. We've got all the other associated fuses and gubbins done. This needs to go into the car to a switch that will run off the ignition. But when it switches on, we have a fan. Well, hopefully I've got more than one fan, but you know, YouTube is slow progress. Anyway, let's get her off and get her finished. It's not a fun car to reverse. So no shocks as to why I've had to take it off from here. So that I can get into here with the door open. Now, this is before I even begin, and that is the state of the wiring underneath the dash. I don't think we'll rationalise any of that. I think we'll just add our fan wiring and run the f away. Okay, pay attention, 007. So, here you see, ignition off, nothing happening. Ignition position one. Airway and the gauge eliminates. Also, 
should it be required. Let's well, switch here. When the fan's on, if you forget to turn it off, it goes off the ignition. I know I've left this lying and I've left the switch not fitting. I've got a funny feeling Jani's probably going to want to swap around and mess around with how the interior of the car looks. So I've left him a good bit of slack behind the dash. Um, so you can put this, frankly, whatever he likes. But the point is, it works. That wraps up that. Another car taken off the mechanical debt list. This is now ready to go for its <laughs> MOT. But that's Jani's problem and not mine. The point is, it runs, it doesn't overheat, and all of the other gauges and nonsense that we were wanting to get dealt with has been done. So next time, we will have another car on mechanical debt, but it might be a wee while away. Thankfully, I'm kind of over the hill on this, so until another big problem arrives, we're going to be back on the low cost and also back on something else. Don't forget, the impressors are getting a bit of paint, the TDR's gone. That's all I'm going to say for the moment. Anyway, Patreon's running up beside the screen. Thank you very much for your support. If you don't know what that's about, patreon.com slash tools and track. And uh, if that's not for you, cool, I get it. Do a like and subscribe thing and all that jazz because everyone on YouTube's meant to do that apparently. And until next week, drive safe guys.